Today I'm reviewing Doctor Who A Christmas Carol. Who are you? Tonight. I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Mrs. Bantavaldi will be looking after you tonight. Doctor Who A Christmas Carol was broadcast on the 25th of December 2010 and stars Matt Smith as the Doctor. It was directed by Toby Hearns and written by Stephen Moffat. It was also the showrunner. Music by Mary Gold and runs 60 minutes. It's inspired by the Charles Dickens novella called A Christmas Carol. Stephen Moffat was a fan of Dickens and says he enjoyed writing the special. The episode sees the acting debut of Welsh singer Catherine Jenkins, who also sings in the episode. It was watched by 12.11 million people and that was the second most watched programme of that day and the fourth highest ever for Doctor Who. The special got positive reviews. Arthur Darfield's character Rory becomes a regular companion in this story. So this is Doctor Who does Charles Dickens. In the episode, a spaceship with 4,000 people on board has been caught in a cloud belt. The Doctor lands on the planet below and meets Kazran played by Michael Gambon, a man who refuses to control the cloud layer and refuses to help. Amy and Rory are stuck on the spaceship so the Doctor's determined to save them. But to do so, he has to travel back in time to Kazran's past and make him a kinder person by meeting his younger self. So the Doctor goes back in time and meets him as a young child and then as a young man. So Kazran, he's a money lender and for payment he keeps some of the family members in these containers. Catherine Jenkins plays Abigail and she's one of the prisoners held in the container. However, Kazran, as a young man, falls in love with her. The doctor lets her out every Christmas Eve to meet Kazran. However, there's a massive twist. Abigail tells Kazran that she's only got one dear left to live. So she can only be let out of the container one more time. And she whispers this to Kazran. And when the doctor suggests he visits some next year to let her out again, Kazran won't tell the doctor that she's only got one more day to live. So he just makes on his sicker all his visits. So I thought that was a really emotional idea. That she's only got one more time to get out of this casket thing. And the doctor doesn't know. He just thinks Kazran's a miserable bastard. Ho oh, bloody ho! Hey Phil! Why is there always a grady old twat in these Christmas stories? So before this special, Matt Smith had done his first full season as the Doctor. So by this time he was on form and he's excellent in this. And even though Matt Smith is like silly and funny, he can also have a bit of a medicine side to him. He even threatens Kazran that uh, if the ship gets destroyed and all these 4,000 people get killed on it, There'll be an extra one that'll die. So I thought that was pretty strong for the, the doctor to say that. Looking all tough now. There are 4,003 people I won't allow to die tonight. Do you know where that puts you? Where? 4,004. Was that a sort of threaty thing? What and for him to actually go back in time to manipulate Kazran's whole personality by visiting them as a child and then as a, a young adult. Like an unusual thing for the Doctor to do. And it's a really clever script by Moffat. He really does inject a, a Christmas carol into this story. Because Matt Smith's Doctor, he even says, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. And Amy, who was set on the ship, she comes down as a hologram. And she's like the ghost of Christmas present because she's in danger of the ship exploding. And the ghost of Christmas yet to come is Kazran himself, because the little child gets to see what he's going to turn out as. So all three ghosts are kind of like put into this story. So I thought for a Christmas special this was one of the best. The only trouble with Christmassy type of stories that Doctor Who does is you can only really watch them in December. It'd be a bit weird if you watch this during the summer. And Matt Smith's Doctor's got a, a lot of time in this to shine. Because Amy and Rory are stuck on the ship, so they're kind of like left out of this story. What are you hearing? Bloody hell, Amy Pondress is a bloody place, woman. That bloody Rory's bloody lucky bugger banging her. <laughs> I thought Catherine Jenkins was really good, considering this was the first acting performance she does. 
She also does some singing that's uh, okay. If you like that kind of opera type of singing. Hey, bloody hell, what a bloody awful bloody singer. And they bloody egg muffs. Anyway, if I had me own way with her field, she wouldn't be able to bloody sing. <laughs> There's also some shark effects that I thought were a little bit um, over the top. I didn't like them. However, Murray Gould's music's incredible in this. It's one of his best. And it really heightens the emotional impact of the story. I also like his little action theme that he does during the Matt Smith era. That's really good music. So Doctor Who's great at doing these emotional storylines where sad things happen. So this is one of the best Christmas specials and Matt Smith's performance as the Doctor's great. He's actually, his Doctor's really good. He's become one of my favourite Doctors. And Stephen Moffat is a much better writer than Chris Chibnall and you can tell by watching this. Mixing Charles Dickens with Doctor Who, that was really well done. Out of 10, I'm going to give this 9. 9 out of 10. But the good thing for once to do like it, that was a load of shit feel. You can't beat Tom Baker as the Doctor. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye. -bye.